That's great. Good morning. I don't know if you've met the councilwoman. She's uh, in her first six months uh, of being on the city council here in Shreveport and doing a great job so far. Well, I haven't had the pleasure, councilwoman. I look forward to it. Uh, you've got a tough job. I it's... mean, local government is the, the, the toughest form of government because you're closest to the people, but you know that found that out by now yes sir it's been interesting uh senator federal judges are looking at obamacare affordable care act and um could could be calling for a complete revamp and you i know you have um congress is now going to have to look at some sort of new health care model for the states to follow what's that going to look like what what if you had your crystal ball and you could develop it what would it look like for you well, good question. Number one, I don't want people to be scared. Um, I don't know how many lawsuits have been filed to test the constitutionality and legality of the Affordable Care Act, but it's it's got to be in the hundreds. Um, nobody knows how those lawsuits are going to turn out. The only thing we do know with respect to lawsuits is that they take a long, long time. So I don't want anybody to listen think that you know they're gonna they're gonna lose their health care number two um wh whatever happens in the courts i can tell you that the united states congress and I, I say this not just as a republican but i think i speak for my democratic friends we're, we're going to cover pre-existing conditions um that's what, what about the high what about the high risk pool of folks we're a lot of concern about the, that the the uh the purpose of the high risk pool, and the legislature just passed a bill providing, setting up a mechanism to establish a high risk pool. In other words, if you you couldn't get insurance from any, the private market, you can go to this high risk pool and all, always be guaranteed insurance. It, it it's a it's a good first start, Aaron. It can work. Um, I've seen it work before. Uh, the trick is you got to have a lot of subsidies. I mean, you've got to have a lot of money to subsidize the program because obviously the health insurance for people who are at risk is going to be higher. Uh, the state didn't appropriate any money. I think they're looking for the federal government to put up the money, which we may well do. I was asked yesterday at press club, Basically, can you guarantee that Congress will put up the money? And, of course, the answer is no. I'll fight like heck to try to get it. Um, but but I don't want people to be concerned and think that the world, their health care world is going to get up, turned upside down anytime soon because it won't. Mm -hmm. Senator, one question I want to ask you, because you, you know, obviously has some interest in the governor's race, but I don't want to ask about that. But I do want to know about your intentions to assist – the, the AG uh, with electing local officials in the Louisiana legislature. Are you are you on with that? Oh yeah, yeah. It's called uh, Louisiana Committee for a Conservative Majority. We have a group of uh, of uh, uh, prominent Louisiana citizens. Uh, myself, not I'm not prominent. I'm the politician. Oh the come man. on. <laughs> and uh, uh, a, a lot of money has been raised, and we're trying to let good people to the legislature. I was in Turkey Creek last night. I endorsed uh, Mayor Heather Cloud, who's running for the Louisiana State Senate uh, down there. I think it would be uh, for uh, Senator Eric LaFleur's seat. He is uh, – Eric is term limited. He can't run again. I'm going to be very active. We, we need more good women, more good men in, in local government and state government, and federal government. I'm, I'm to the extent that candidates want my help, I'm, I'm going to be providing it. You are here today, going to be at Barksdale. What's, what's yep. the mission this morning when you, when you pop in at Barksdale? Well, I just like to touch base with Barksdale uh, now and again, not just by phone, but in person. Uh, I'll be there with Congressman Mike Johnson. Uh, we're going to be meeting with. Uh, base officials that are responsible for the Global Strike Command. Uh, of course, the Global Strike Command oversees nuclear bombers and missiles. I, I can't overstate the importance of Barksdale to uh, the, the security of the American people. I mean, I just can't. We're trying to give them help. The Senate, uh, we just passed 
uh, a $750 billion defense authorization bill. Uh, it's going to provide a 3.1% pay raise for active duty military. I'm very proud of that. We starved our, uh, our defense folks to death for the longest time. In the last two years, we've, we've been giving them more money. Uh, we live in a dangerous world, and weakness invites the world. Um, I also helped, along with Mike and other members of the delegation, Senator Cassidy, I helped uh, get funding for the long-awaited Barksdale, Ensign's Road, and Gate Complex. Uh, I think the state's putting up some money. The feds will be putting up some money, and we're going to get that done. This has been on the it's been on the back burner for for years. Uh, of course, Barksdale is just extraordinarily important to our economy in mm-hmm. West Louisiana. I- Iran has announced they have more low enriched uranium than the level I guess we agreed upon in the the nuclear deal. That makes folks at Barksdale. That makes folks across the country concerned. Uh, how concerning is it to you as a U.S. senator to hear that from Iran now? Well, of course I'm concerned. Iran is a cancer on the Middle East. It's a cancer on the world. I feel bad for the Iranian people. I think they're good people. But their leader, the Ayatollah, um, he's a terrorist. And he thinks that if you don't agree with his version of his religion, then you need to die. Um, President Obama made a so-called deal with the Ayatollah. I think it was back in 2015. It was a bad deal. He uh, got the Ayatollah to agree to delay uh, his enrichment of uranium the goal of which is to build a nuclear weapon. He got the Ayatollah to agree to delay it for a while. Mm. But then he gave Ayatollah all his money back that we had frozen worldwide, about $100, $150 billion. And the Ayatollah started going out and committing terrorist acts all over the world. Mm. Uh, he's, he's doing it and has done it in Yemen, in Iraq, in Syria, mm. uh, in France, and uh Bulgaria, uh, I mean, he's just an evil man. And uh, I don't know why if I make it to heaven, I'm going to ask the Lord why there are evil people in this world, but there are, and they understand strength. Mm-hmm. The president has in, uh, uh, reimposed sanctions on Iran that are just really hurting Iran. I feel bad again for the Iranian people, but we're starving them out. I think the... Uh, the, uh, the Ayatollah is head of a government that is fragile. Uh, it's exhausted. I think if we keep the pressure on, then uh, eventually the Ayatollah will come to the table and we can negotiate uh, a better deal than President Obama did. Senator, uh, Councilwoman's got a question for Senator, you. Senator, I want to pivot sure. back home. Um, what are the chances of us seeing some federal funds for infrastructure for existing as well as new projects anytime soon? Well, uh, the people of Louisiana pay uh, about 35 cents uh, per uh, tax per gallon of gas. 38 cents, I think that's what it is, 38. Um, a, a big chunk of that is federal. I think our federal gasoline tax is 18 cents. That money goes to Washington. And I fight very hard every year in the Senate to get our fair share of that money back. You know, on average through the years, we will send back uh, from the federal government about $700 million a year. Now, if the Department of Transportation and Development in Baton Rouge chooses to waste that money, to spend it on political projects, uh, to spend it on overhead as opposed to infrastructure, I, I can't control that. I wish I could, um, but but uh, I think we're doing we're, we're doing our fair share in terms of getting money back to Louisiana. I'm pretty proud of our efforts. Mm-hmm. Well, the president at one point was considering like a trillion dollar um, broad sweeping infrastructure plan, and it seems like we've gone kind of quiet on that. Well, the question is how to pay for it. Mm-hmm. I mean, everybody's for infrastructure. I don't know a single person or politician that's going to come out and say. 
infrastructure's bad. Let's get mm-hmm. rid of what we got. <laughs> and we need roads and bridges and airports. Yeah. I'll the just question is out. I want to throw it out there. Out. That will be a lot. It's going to be hard for us to be safe if we can't get anywhere, if we can't evacuate on the roads that we have. Maybe some well, of the money I, that we're spending I, I, on military I, I spending. Councilman, I think you're overstating it a little bit. I think we can we can get around on the roads we have. The question is, how do you maintain them, and right. how do you improve them? And uh, I'm not going to vote at the federal level. My colleagues can speak for themselves. I'm not going to vote vote to increase gasoline taxes. I think we can find extra money in the Louisiana state budget, in the local government budget, and in the federal budget to spend the money we need on uh, on roads. Great. If it's if, there, let's look for look it. Let's, let's look for it together then, Senator. Senator, thank you so much for your time this morning. Thanks, guys. You bet. And welcome Happy to town. Thank you so much, sir. Appreciate your time.